Hello there, everybody. Uh, Dan Calloway again, and thanks for watching. I'm coming to you again from the Linux Unix Tech Channel. Um, I'm in Arch Linux XFCE desktop uh, for my laptop here, my business laptop. Um, this is my daily driver. Love this operating system. Thank you, Silent Robot, for developing this. Really like it a lot. Use it every day, and I, I couldn't do without it now that I have it. Today I want to talk about uh, something different uh, than I normally talk about. I'm not going to be doing any reviews of Linux distros or anything like that, but what I want to do is I want to review three different text editors um, that I have on my system. I have all three of these installed. Now, um, Salient OS, which is the operating system that you see here, this is based on Arch XFCE 4, uh, comes with Exed, uh, which is XED, which is the default text editor. Uh, Zed, maybe, is how you pronounce it. Uh, Exed, maybe, XED. But anyway, it's the default text editor. Uh, it's more than just a text editor. I mean, you can edit, uh, you know, text files, but uh, like any other text editors, uh, you can also uh, edit um, programming languages, uh, code, source code, with the uh, editor as well. And you can do that with Zed. Uh, that's how I pronounce it. So let's get into it. Uh, first one I want to show you, I've got a couple of files um, out on um, the installation um, location for an application that I have installed. Let me go ahead and show you that first. Um, what I've done here is I've gone up on the Apache Friends website at www.apachefriends.org and I've looked at CHAMP, it's X-A-M-P-P -P. and what that stands for is it's cross-platform Apache MariaDB, PHP, and Perl. Those are combined to form or create this application platform called CHAMP, that's how it's pronounced. Uh, it is cross-platform which means you can run it on Windows, you can run it on Linux, you can run it on OS X, and there are other uh, operating systems as well that it can be run on. BSD, for instance, is one of them. What I did was I grabbed this Champ for Linux uh, here and downloaded it and installed it, and it incorporates um, PHP version 7.3.2 into the mix. Now I'm a PHP programmer. Um, so I will show you uh, an application, web-based app that I developed a while back, back in 2015. Um, I'll get into that in a few minutes. But uh, anyway, it, this is uh, version 7.3.2 of Champ for Linux, and that's what I installed. All right. And so when I did that, um, what that did, let me go out here and show you. Let me get into File Manager. It installed that under file system a directory called OPT or opt Let me get into the file system here's OPT and here's it's called lamp okay for Linux because this is specific to Linux because I have it installed on Linux there is a um, a link soft link from the XAMPP directory to LAMPP and so that's why it's called lamp here um, but anyway, under this, there's an Apache 2 folder or directory, and there's an htdocs directory here as well. All right. Now, what the Apache web server, if you know anything about Apache web servers, um, and let me get into this particular directory, uh, there is a directory here called dashboard, which is the dashboard for the home page uh, of the Champ uh, platform. Uh, I have two files that I installed, or actually uploaded rather, to uh, the dashboard folder directory uh, and placed that into uh, the htdocs directory. Uh, let me find that. htdocs. Or actually, no, here they are. Uh, Fibonacci.html and Fibonacci.php. It's under the dashboard directory. Okay. Uh, this is where Apache 2, if you tell it to, this is in the config file. This is where it goes looking for um, 
files that it uploads. All right, now this isn't going to be exactly the way it's supposed to work because you shouldn't have to to tell it to use the directory dashboard um, when you're looking for for files to upload to the server and present in the web. Uh, but that's the way I've got it today, and that's the way I'm going to show you. All right, so this is where it installed. All right, and so let me go back out here and show you that. Uh, actually, let me go to the sixth workspace I have. I have an alias that I created. Let me get into the terminal, and it's called Samp or Champ. Okay, it's pro uh, prompting for me me for my password. Let me go ahead and put that in. All right, and it brings up this Champ 7.3.1-0 interface, and there's a tab here called Manage Servers. If I click it, you can see that there's a MySQL database, a Pro FTP D or Daemon uh, server, and an Apache web server. Now I'm going to need this Apache web server running in order to do what I need to do here to show you um, later on about the actual files that I created to make the web-based app that I have called Fibonacci. So I'm going to go ahead and click the start button and start start that server. And so it's coming up now. And it's running right now, okay? I'm going to leave it running. I'm going to go back out here uh, to this directory here and I'm going to go ahead and just close this out altogether. Get back to the desktop. And first thing I want to show you is uh, I already have uh, set up these three um, text editors that I want to show you um, and compare. The first one is the Z text editor, and it looks like this. If I go up to the Help button here and go down to About, you can see that we're running Z 2.0.2. It's a small, lightweight text editor, according to what it says there. And if I right-click and open the link, uh, it should take me out to the Z database, or web uh, website rather, uh, on GitHub. Okay, which well actually is the database anyway, but it's the GitHub um, project for Z, and it's uh, Linux Mint. All right, so you can grab it from there. It's actually installed here, out of the box in uh, Arch XFCE Salient OS. All right. And so uh, let me go ahead and close the browser now. And let's get back here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and close this uh, screen. And so here is the Z text editor. Uh, you've got a menu here with file. And you've got various functionality here, which is normal, new, open, save as, etc., quit, close edit which you can then uh, sort lines or you've got preferences that you can take advantage of as well. Uh, you can change the theme of your Z um, text editor as well. All right now I've got it set on the dark theme and then I've got a schema that I've got set up in here in the editor um, and then um, you know so you, you can turn this on or off. So if I turned off the dark theme it would go into a light a light theme. I prefer the dark theme. All right, here with view, you can uh, do full screen. You can do word wrap. Let me turn word wrap on. Word wrap was off. Okay, so I've got it on now. Um, and you can get larger text, smaller text, normal size, highlight mode. You can click a sidebar here if you want a sidebar, uh, which shows you the files that are currently loaded. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and turn the sidebar off. All right, and you can do a search and you can search for and replace and go to a particular line if you want to because this is an enumerated uh, list here of, of you know numbered lines. Um, you can select documents for save all, close all. Shows the two files. I'm currently in the Fibonacci.html file, etc. Okay, so this is this is the uh, Fibonacci. Um, web application that I created that I wrote back in June the 28th of 2015 so it's been a while uh, but what this particular web application does it consists of two different files 
Fibonacci.html and Fibonacci.php, and that's what it looks like here. So this is the PHP code for the Fibonacci web application. Okay, uh, I'll just scroll down. If you're a web, if you're a PHP programmer, you can see what we've got going on here. Um, and then this is Fibonacci.html. This is the HTML page that presents on the screen, which you'll see here when I show it to you here in a moment. Um, but it, the both of those together constitute what's called a web application, and so. This one prompts the user for certain information, and the PHP file then processes it through the PHP preprocessor, and then creates a, another website page on the fly with the solution or the uh, display, if you will. Okay, so that's basically what I wanted to show you. This is the Z text editor. All right, looks pretty good. You know, very usable. I like it. Good choice for uh, silent o silent robot to put in his salient OS. Next editor I want to show you is Kate. Now Kate is a KDE desktop environment text editor. Uh, this is nice because I've got it set up in the solarized dark theme. Here's the Fibonacci.html and here's the Fibonacci.php. Now you notice in both of these you've got color coding going on here. Okay. The color coding is dependent upon the type of programming that you have going on here. Now, in the HTML file, I've obviously told, um, through the settings, I've told uh, Kate to uh, that I'm using HTML code. And so it goes and creates this uh, contrasting uh, color scheme, if you will, based on the... Uh, particular tags that I use. These are HTML tags. It's the head tag, HTML tag, the title tag, table tag, etc., etc. Okay. The PHP side and the Fibonacci.php file, same things going on. We've got embedded HTML code and then we've got a PHP tag, uh, PHP code block rather, that starts with uh, less than question mark PHP. And then you've got color coding that are um, similar or familiar to the PHP programming class, okay, of programming, uh, that I've told um, Kate that I'm, you know, this is PHP code, so give me the color coding combinations for that, and so it, it did just that. This is blue for variables, and this is a dollar next latest term, this is a sign zero, okay, and then nth term is, uh, you know, a variable from uh, the Fibonacci HTML side, and so it brings it in as red. This is red, which means it's from HTML side over here, okay, in that other file. Now, the thing about the, the Kate editor is, it's really nice, is it's got, it's a little more functional, it's got a lot more possibilities. Z is more lightweight, and it says that it's lightweight, okay. So you can see what's available under File. Under Edit, you can see that you've got a lot more possibilities here. <clears throat> under the edit side. Under view, you've got plenty more. Word wrap is turned on dynamic right now. Not static window. You still got numbering going on over here too, by the way. So you can see, you know, uh, if you want to look at, you know, some error message or whatever pops up for your PHP code as you're programming, that the error message points to line 19. You, know, you can just go right into line 19 and see what it is. Very nice. Okay, under the projects, you can pull projects in. Uh, bookmarks, you can set bookmarks here. Sessions, you can open a new session in Kate, which you can't do in Z as far as I know. So this has uh, got a lot more possibilities. Here you've got a lot more possibilities under your tools. Under settings, uh, you've got a bunch more possibilities as well. And then here under Kate, we're running this. You've got a Kate handbook. Um, you can donate to the site here. But if you go about Kate, it tells you that the current version we're running is 18.12.2, fairly recent version of Kate. All right, this tells you the libraries that are involved, the authors who wrote uh, Kate. All right, there are quite a few of them, and then uh, a thanks to you know various companies and people that were involved in the Kate project here. Okay. So that's Kate, okay, and 
Next one is the one that I use a lot, and I'm not really getting into it. This is the professional version of what's called the Sublime 2 text editor. And you can see how much crisper looking the, the text uh, looks here in the coding for source code. I really like it. This is the H same HTML file. And if you compare that to, say, what you see here in Kate, uh, if you go here, you can see what you see here, okay? If you go back to Sublime Text 2, I, I just like this a lot better. All right, uh, and then you've got various tabs that come up. So this is, you know, just like the others. This is the PHP file. This is the HTML file, back and forth, okay? Um, but just like the others, now this is the professional version here of Sublime 2. Uh, so let's look at Sublime Text 2 and uh, you can see here it's Sublime Text 2 alright uh, and it is registered. Uh, what's really nice is you've got tons of possibilities here so let's go to file I mean just take a look at this I mean, you've got all kinds of stuff going on here that you can do here under file. Under edit you can do uh, you know do and undo selections, you can go to particular lines, you can indent, you can swap line down or up or whatever. You can do markup uh, coding here as well. You can uh, do code folding, you can convert case here, you can do wrapping as well. Um, you can sort lines, you can do uh, uh, permuting of lines for reverse, unique, and shuffle. Stuff you can't do in even Kate, for example. Um, you can split into lines. You can uh, expand various selections here for scope and brackets, indentation, and tag. You've got uh, full functional find functionality here for finding things in your code because you could have thousands of lines of code. I, I don't have quite that many. Um, you know, but uh, I mean, I probably have, you know, 60. Um, anyway, word wrap was not turned on, so I'll turn word wrap on here. You've got a go to functionality here with the pull down uh, tools. You've got snippets, so you've got full snippets that you can work with. Uh, Kate had snippets as well, I just didn't show you that. Uh, here you've got project, you can open a new project, or you can open up a recent project under preferences. You can change your color scheme here. So I am happen, happen to be running the Monokai color scheme. Now, if I wanted to go to Solarize Dark, all i got to do is switch over to that, and there I am. Okay, So it just switches on the fly. I can change the font size here that way. Let me go back to Monokai. I like the Monokai better. Okay, So these are the three text editors. Zed, all right, and Kate, and... Sublime Text 2. All right. This isn't the latest version of Sublime. There's a Sublime Text 3 editor out. I just don't happen to have it. Uh, okay, so that's text editors. Now, the last thing I want to show you, I, I do have the Apache web server running, okay? And so I should be able to go out through my Firefox web browser and I should be able to go to the local host, which is the server. And let me go there when, I, when this settles down. Uh, let me go to HTTP colon forward slash forward slash local host and dashboard and Fibonacci dot HTML. I'm going to render this particular file, which is a one part of the two-part web-based application that I created because it consists of the Fibonacci.html and the Fibonacci.php file. Okay, so if I render that via the web, this is what it looks like. All right, so if I go back to the Sublime Text Editor and show you that HTML file, this series, you know, this block of code here of HTML, which consists of 40 lines. Okay. This is how it renders on the web when you render it in the Firefox web browser. All right. If you're not familiar with the Fibonacci sequence, what the Fibonacci sequence is, is it's a sequence, and here's some information right here. Leonardo Bonacci, known as Fibonacci, 
and also Leonardo de Pisa, um, was an Italian mathematician considered to be the most talented Western mathematician of the Middle Ages. And so he created a sequence uh, of, of numbers that start with 1, and then the next number is 1 plus the previous number, which is 0, which is 1. And then the third term of the sequence is the first sum of the first two terms, which is 1 plus 1, which is 2. And then the fourth term of the sequence is the second term plus the third term, which is uh, 2 plus 1, which is 3. And so what you have going there is a sequence of numbers whose nth term is the n minus first term plus n minus um, 1 minus 1 term. Okay, so um, what I'm saying is, is like, for instance, an example, the seventh term of the sequence would be the sum of the fifth term and the sixth term. All right? And so you, your sequence looks like this. It's, I, I don't have it written out here, but it's like 1, comma, 1, comma, 2, comma, 3, comma, uh, five comma eight it's dot 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 okay where the nth term is the sum of the two previous what this particular program does that I created uh, that I wrote in uh, PHP is it has an input field here and let me go ahead and I need to turn that off so you can see it um, I have some things going on in my browser for darkening the screen so what I do is it's prompting the user for the nth term of the Fibonacci sequence that they would like to have evaluated. And so, for example, I've, if I want the 25th term of this Fibonacci sequence evaluated, okay, I would put 25 in that box right there. So that would be, if you're looking at the sequence itself, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, dot, 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 it would go out to the 25th term of that sequence where 1, the first term, 1 is the first term, the second term, 1 is the second term, the third term, 3, okay, is the third term, and the fourth term is 3 plus 2 is 5. So the fourth term of this sequence is 5. And what I want to do is I want to look at the 25th term, all right, which would take you a while to do if you did it by hand. All right. Uh, but this particular program will do it very quickly for you. And it does it using PHP code programming. There is a PHP file that when I hit this submit button here for submitting the nth term of that evaluation to the PHP program, okay, what it does is Apache passes off the file with this input to the PHP preprocessor, all right, running on the server and it evaluates that term and then returns a web page with the results of that 25th term. So that's what we're going to get here, uh, hopefully, when I click the Submit button. So let's go ahead and do that. Let me go ahead and click Submit. And it returned a web page on the fly to me, evaluating the 25th term. It says the nth term of the Fibonacci sequence you requested is 25. The value of the nth term of the Fibonacci sequence is 75,025. So if I wrote out the Fibonacci sequence, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, dot, 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 and I went out 25 terms, this would be the sum that would be in that 25th term. 75,025. All right. So let's go back, and let's change this to something we know. All right, so let's look. Remember the, the sequence is 1, 1, 2, okay, comma, 3. All right, so 3 represents the fourth term of that sequence, I believe. 1, 1, 2, all right, comma, 3. All right, so let's go ahead and hit Submit. And it is. All right, so that's 3 is the value in the fourth term, which is what I said. So we know this is working. Looks like it's working fairly well. Um, but let's look. What, what if you put the first term? We want to look at the first term of the sequence. And so let's see what that is. Should be one. Okay. Very good. Now the second term of this sequence should also be one. So let's go ahead and put a two in there. Let's see if it works. Hopefully it does. 
Now the restriction here is, and it's implied, is that you can't put a negative number in here. Okay, so let's put that in. The second term is a one. So the first term is a one. The second term is a one. The third term is a three with, uh, that we saw. The fourth term, okay, should be, uh, I mean two rather. The third, fourth term is a three. So what the next term is it should be three plus two. So the fifth term should evaluate to five, and it does. All right. So this is working really well. Um, and so let me just go back out here and pull up the documents folder. And let's go out and let's create a new document, empty file. And I'll just call it empty file for now. And I'm just going to go ahead and um, open that up. Okay, and so this is what the Fibonacci sequence looks like. Okay, so 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13. So 5 and 8 is 13, 13 and 8 is 21. This goes on infinitely. Right? The Fibonacci sequence does not have an end ending to it. It goes on to infinity. First term is a 1, second term is a 1, as we saw in the program. Third term is a 2, fourth term is a 3, fifth term is a 5. We showed that in this web-based app. So the application that I wrote, the web-based application to evaluate the nth term of this sequence did seem to work out just fine. Let's look at one more time, one more example. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eighth term. All right, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The eighth term has a value of 21. So let's go back out to the application. And let's go back to the beginning of it so we can input the information here. And let's put in the eighth term. So we want the eighth term of this sequence evaluated. It should be 21. And it is. So this program's working great. Okay. So I just wanted to show you that, and I wanted to show you the uh, three text editors that I have, uh, which brings up the code that I created for this particular program, web-based application. And uh, that's pretty much all I have to show you today. And so um, I just want to thank you for watching, and have a nice day.